Uh, first of all, I would uh, thank the organizer to invite me, and especially, of course, uh, Josiane Sia, uh, who spent uh, a lot of uh, energy, mitochondria energy, to organize uh, that uh, congress, that nice congress. Of course, this uh, talk has to deal with mitochondria. I'm not a specialist of mitochondria, but uh, I'm working in a group that is using, where we use uh, nanoparticles to deliver drugs. And you will see the connection uh, between the nanoparticle and the mitochondria in, this, in that talk. So we use, sorry, we use uh, a rajit nanoparticle. And uh, for example, you can see here a nanoparticle containing a third uh, by volume of ketoprofen and uh, two thirds of a rajit. And uh, to deliver peros, uh, especially uh, some drugs like ketoprofen or low molecular mass heparin and uh, the anticoagulant, uh, anticoagulant uh, treatment is working with that kind of delivery uh, on rabbit, for example. And uh, we raised the, case, the question, are those uh, nanoparticles uh, immunotoxic? Because uh, does that nanoparticle interact with macrophages? Because you know that all particle, living particle, like virus uh, or bacteria uh, or inert particle, microparticle and nanoparticle may interact with this first line of defenses, of non-specific defenses of the organism. Uh, what kind of nanoparticle we used? Uh, we used eudragids uh, that are polymetacrylate particle, RS or RL, you will see both, and the only difference is the number of quaternary ammonium groups. Uh, the RS, Erdrajit nanoparticle, were prepared by nanoprecipitation, the RL prepared by double emulsion, and uh, you can see uh, the physical chemistry characteristics of uh, uh, those nanoparticles, the size, the, the size is lower uh, by nanoprecipitation, is more higher uh, by uh, double emulsion, and the uh, potential, the zeta potential, surface potential is approximately the same, it's positively charged particle. And we can see that the data of the zeta size are in accordance with electron microscopy, whatever, scanning or transmission. What are the used cells in that talk, in that study? First, of course, three uh, kinds of macrophages, monocytes, red alveolar NR8383 83 macrophages, human CD14 plus cells that are uh, more than 99% pure. Uh, we got those uh, cells from uh, blood donors. And THP1 human monocytes, uh, that we was from ATCC, like uh, NR8383. And human mammary epithelial cells, of course, not macrophages, but epithelial cells. Uh, uh, I worked with when I was in Brooks Labs uh, in Berkeley la last year. And uh, the first question was, is there an uptake of those nanoparticles? And we have some uh, answer uh, elements. Uh, first of all, uh, for example, RS nanoparticle in rat alveolar macrophages. Uh, we have seen with uh, TEM that there is uh, intake at the uh, unit level. We can see some nanoparticle in the cytoplasm 
and we have images, uh, pictures like uh, uh, internalization through a clattering dependent uh, mechanism. Uh, we saw the same kind of picture with CD14 plus human monocytes. And you can see that there are some uh, uptake that evokes uh, the uptake of viruses. For uh, human mammary epithelial cells, uh, we have also uptake of nanoparticles, less uptake in that case, and we remarked with uh, Raja Hussein in Brooks Labs that the main uh, nanoparticles are aggregated outside uh, the cells, but some are, of course, inside the cells. Here we have the nanoparticle particle, uh, labeled by, by Red Nile, and uh, they appear in white. And you have seen uh, in George Brooks, uh, the video uh, in George Brooks' talk. So what kind of uptake, for example, in uh, uh, THP1 uh, human monocytes, and when we use Eudragit uh, uh, RL nanoparticle, we can show that there is uh, no uptake by phagocytosis, by using specific inhibitors, and uh, there is a part that use the clatrin pathway, a part that use the caveolin pathway, and a part that use the endocytosis independent pathway. So you can see there is no unambiguous result. So the second question uh, that raised uh, are those nanoparticles uh, cytotoxic or not? And the first experiment we did uh, was with NR8383 rat alveolar macrophages and uh, we checked uh, 16-8 dehydrogenase and uh, we uh, remarked that, we showed that there is a, a strong inhibition of cell growth but also of metabolic activity of those cells with a 50% inhibitory inhibition uh, concentration of 188 uh, microgram per ml of uh, uh, nanoparticle. Uh, on uh, uh, CD14 plus human uh, monocytes, we show also uh, those dependent decrease of metabolic activity and cell viability with a 50% uh, IC inhibitory concentration of uh, 90 microgram per ml. Uh, what happens with uh, NR8383 but with RL uh, nanoparticle? Here we uh, evidenced only a small decrease of metabolic uh, activity. Now we have another situation uh, with an increase of metabolic activity. And when we use TP1 human monocytes and uh, Adragit RS uh, uh, polymer uh, nanoparticles, we can see an increase of metabolic activity as checked by 16 8 and but no action on cell viability. But you see the situation is relatively complicated. When we use TP1 uh, human monocytes, Eudragit RL, and we saw in that case a dose-dependent increase of metabolic activity and also cell viability with the activation a concentration of 50% of uh, 100 uh, uh, micrograms per ml. 
What happens with epithelial cells, human mammary epithelial cells? Here also, we have a nice increase of uh, metabolic activity with a very low act activating concentration uh, of, uh, that was 3 microgram per ml, as you can see. So, uh, when we summarize all the data on uh, macrophages, on the four and, and on that kind of cells, on epithelial cells, uh, we can see that uh, in certain cases there is a decrease of metabolic activity. Here is the slope of decrease, the maximal slope of decrease, and uh, uh, for, for example, for, for uh, those cells and those particles, uh, ERS or ERL, Rajit RS or RL, and RL, sorry, and in certain circumstances you have an increase of metabolic activity depending on the cell you used and depending on the nanoparticle you used. So the question is now why can we have in, in certain cases a decrease of metabolic activity and why we can have uh, an increase of metabolic activity. So first, the decrease of metabolic activity. Is there some element for explanation? Of course, when we have, as a toxicologist, when, when I have a decrease of metabolic activity, I think about necrosis or apoptosis. So we checked uh, apoptosis, apoptosis and uh, with a high dose of uh, ERS uh, uh, RS nanoparticle, and uh, we can show that there is some caspase activity in the cytoplasm, but, but when we use uh, another test, DNA fragmentation, we can see there is no fragmentation compared to positive control and no uh, enzymic activity of polyADP ribose polymerase. So finally, there is no evidence for apoptosis. So we went back to the micrography that uh, uh, we did in the first time uh, to check the uptake, the uptake of those nanoparticles. No, first of that, sorry, we did a transcriptomic studies and of course we checked uh, two doses one low and one high doses. And uh, uh, we showed a, a certain number of uh, differentially expressed genes, of course, and certain, we found no genes expressed in apoptosis, uh, but we found two interesting genes. Uh, the first of one is ATG16L1, and the second is OP. Uh, OPA1, uh, optic atrophy, uh, that was mentioned by George. So we went back to uh, the transmission electron micrography and uh, we saw nine uh, nice uh, autophagy uh, picture. And you can see here the beginning of a phagophore formation with uh, membranes enclosing uh, uh, organelles, and this is the beginning of a phagophore of autophagy. And uh, we showed, we, we, we found also autophagosomes, uh, as you can see here, and uh, it was the first evidence of autophagy in. Uh, in human uh, cells, in macrophages, for nanoparticles, for polymeric nanoparticles. Uh, this kind of cell death was described first in 2008 for viruses. Uh, autophagy was also checked by uh, biomarkers, by protein biomarkers, not only at the gene level, and, uh, of course, uh, there was a dose-dependent increase of 
LC3 uh, uh, of LC3 that is a mediator, a main mediator of, of autophagy. You have uh, we have uh, we had numerous uh, talk mentioning that uh, 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 marker of autophagy, and uh, uh, the increase is also uh, time dependent. It's not only uh, concentration dependent, but, uh, but also uh, time dependent. Uh, we had also nice picture, electron micrography, uh, where we can show actually that nanoparticles are crossing the membrane, the double membrane of mitochondria. You can see here nanoparticles just in the vicinity of the double membrane. membrane. Here you can see a nanoparticle crossing that uh, uh, membrane. And uh, uh, after that uh, initial step, the, so, sorry, there is some, uh, uh, some swelling uh, of mitochondria. And uh, we checked also OPA1, uh, uh, optic uh, atrophy uh, gene, uh, uh, that uh, was a product. Uh, diminished in, as a function of time, sorry. So that means that uh, there is mitochondrion fission. The, those uh, uh, evidence of autophagy was uh, also seen in uh, CD14 uh, human monocytes. And uh, you have similar uh, picture of autophagy. Uh, you have a picture of uh, uh, nanoparticle, uh, RS nanoparticle, they enter mitochondria. And uh, you have also uh, evidence of uh, uh, time dependent OPA1 degradation here, uh, as you can see in uh, this electrophoresis. So, uh, the decrease is due to, uh, likely, to autophagy. And uh, how can, you, can we explain the increase of uh, metabolic activity? We have some element for explanation. What happens first in mitochondria of that nice uh, cell? Uh, you can see, actually, the poster of uh, uh, this work, and uh, you can see uh, in detail, uh, it, it is the poster of uh, uh, Raja uh, Hussein, and uh, when we exposed HashMec cells to uh, 25 microgram per ml, uh, we, and we take for endpoint the mitochondrial average volume. Uh, when we calculate the volume of those uh, uh, mitochondria, uh, uh, mitochondrion in uh, uh, exposed cells and control cells, we show an increase of the mitochondria volume uh, of 180% of the control. There is no fission in that case, no fission of uh, uh, mitochondria, there is a fusion uh, more fusion uh, of mitochondria, no evidence of autophagy. And how can we explain that? When we check the, uh, some picture uh, of cell culture uh, by fast contrast microscopy, we have an element, we had an element of response to that question. Uh, we can see that in, uh, when we add nanoparticles, uh, you can see that a lot of cells organize around those nanoparticles, a network uh, around those nanoparticles. And we can see those nanoparticles with the arrows here. So the cells cluster around uh, aggregates of Erdrogit RS nanoparticle. 
that was also seen in the confocal microscopy study. And why? Uh, we remarked that when we add, uh, nano, uh, when we add nanoparticle to serum, uh, we find an opalescence. And this opalescence, to make a story, a long story uh, fast, short, we can say that uh, that network, that opalescence is due, is due to the network of nanoparticles. Uh, that network can be disrupted by chaotropic ion, uh, ions. And we can uh, evidence uh, some uh, protein in the supernatum, uh, of course, and those proteins were analyzed uh, by Malditov, and we found uh, nearly 200 proteins aggregated uh, to uh, uh, nanoparticles. And uh, uh, when we subject those proteins uh, to uh, uh, the string database to find strong interactors, we can show that uh, mainly uh, the central core was uh, uh, our protein represented by serpin, protease, and coagulation factor. And around that central core, we have protein uh, involved in cell adhesion, in growth, uh, that contains EGF domains and in differentiation or migration. So we can imagine that there is a better availability of a protein for uh, human mammary uh, epithelial cells. And what else? Just very recent results uh, from the Cairo group in Egypt. Uh, showed that when we injected a nanoparticle at 50 microgram per kilo in the peritoneum of Wister rats, we can show a diminution in hypoglycemia uh, as soon as 48 hours and during lasting uh, uh, more than uh, two or three weeks. So maybe uh, Nanoparticle may, sorry, may induce hypoglycemia by favoring its uptake by cells and favor also glucose and lipo lipid metabolism in cells. That is a hypothesis. So there is, in conclusion, there is a, a genus phase of the nanoparticle. In certain case, we had a, a nanoparticle that penetrated per unit by endocytosis in cells. There, uh, they were described in the vicinity of the inner membrane of the mitochondria and inside of it. They induced mitochondrial decay through phagophore and autophagosome formation. And they activated the autophagic pathway uh, in those cells. Finally, they behave like an immunotoxic virus. There is an analogy in size, of course, uh, in polymeric nature in endo for endocytosis and autophagy. In contrast, uh, for other cell types or other nanoparticles, they penetrated less, in, for example, in epithelial HMEC cells. They organized and favored organization of HMEC in epithelium. Uh, they cluster with serum proteins that are useful for growth and they allow better uh, availability for cells. Finally, they increase dramatically their metabolic activity, perhaps through a better distribution of glucose of, or other nutrient to cells. So I, I would like to thank now uh, the Nancy team, uh, and uh, especially uh, Ramia Safar, uh, on, and uh, Carol Ronzani, they are here, and they can, uh, you can uh, answer, they can answer the, your question uh, before, uh, in front of the poster. You can see that Carol is just in starting block to answer the question. And uh, I would like to thank, uh, to thank also the Berkeley team, George Brooks and Raja Hussein, 
and the Cairo team uh, headed by Mossad Abdel Wahab for the last results. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. I cannot uh, answer uh, so uh, in, in a simple manner. Of course, the, you have seen this is a very complicated uh, issue. Uh, there is a, a different kind of interaction, and uh, even the, uh, the, the interaction with, uh, between inert particles and uh, uh, living material and, li and, li and cells is specific. Uh, from uh, has a specificity uh, due to nanoparticles polymer and due uh, to uh, cells specificity. It's like a virus uh, when you have a, a hepatitis C virus, he cannot enter a, a muscle cell. He must, he, but he, 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 it enter only in hepato in hepatocytes. So that we should check every kind of, uh, of, uh, uh, of cells, maybe, uh, and carefully do uh, the in vivo study, studies. Uh, and some of the studies performed now uh, in, by uh, Professor El Wahab team in uh, Cairo. Uh, and we have sh shown that some nanoparticles are uh, inside uh, the kidney. So there is, a, uh, I think you should, we should use uh, biodegradable nanoparticles. Those are not spe specially biodegradable because as they are uh, polymers of metacrylate. But we can design uh, biodegradable, uh, for example, poly, uh, glycolic uh, nanoparticles polylactico and glyco uh, glycolic na uh, nanoparticle. Uh, I think that may be uh, interesting. The administration was intravenous? In a yeah, no, in intraperitoneally. Intraperitone. Can, can go everywhere. 